Hi, this is section 1.1, Systems of Linear Equations. And we are in linear algebra. Woo! This should be some fun. I really like this stuff, so we'll see how this goes. So what we want to start off is solving systems and relate what we have when we have two equations, two unknowns, to what happens when we have three equations, three unknowns, four equations, four unknowns, so on. So I would say jump right in and try to solve all three of these. And then pause it and try and see if you get what I get. So for the first one, what I do is I uh, create a situation of elimination. So I take the second equation that I have here, and I'm going to multiply it by 3 because I know that the y's will cancel then. So I have a 3y here and then a negative 3y here. Add those together, I'm going to get 0. So I'm going to add equation number 1 to equation number 3. And when I do that, I'm going to get 11x is equal to 17. And then I'm going to get x is equal to 17 over 11. Now if we take this value and back substitute it into either 1, 2, or 3, any one of those equations, we can go ahead and find the y value. I'm going to plug it into here. And when I do that, I'm going to get 3y is equal to 21 over 11. I already kind of did this, and so I'm going to get 7 over 11. And so that's my x and my y. So that's how you solve the system equations, two equations, two unknowns. Now if you go to number two, or this second problem here, what happens? If I take the first equation and multiply it by negative two, I'm going to get this equation right here. So if I add, I'm going to get, ooh, zero is equal to 16. When is that true? Pretty sure that's true never. And so what this happens, what happens is that we have two lines. And if you look at the slopes, the slope of both of them is going to be negative two-thirds. And so we're going to end up with parallel lines. So parallel lines gives us no solution. So that would be a different case. Over here, we did get a point of intersection of the two lines. And then the point is namely those two values. Here, none. Now what happens in this last one? With this one, I get a true statement. The true statement is zero is equal to zero. And with this one, oh, what happens to those two equations? Well, they are simultaneous all over the place, and so they are the same line. And so what we have is really kind of these three different situations. We're going to get one solution, we're going to get no solutions, and now we're going to get an infinite number of solutions. And so we want to classify what each one of those is called. And so with this, I have this right here, no solution exactly one solution or infinitely many solutions. And that's the three cases that we had above there. And so now here's some wording that we deal with. Maybe you had this in Algebra 1, maybe not. But if they have a solution, then we're going to say that the system is consistent. And that could be either one solution or infinitely many solutions. And then it goes, it's going to be inconsistent if it has no solutions. So then what we have above there, so we have consistent for the first one, and inconsistent for the second one, and consistent for the third one. So that's some language we need to develop. Now what we want to try to do is get into system of three equations, three unknowns. But I'm going to go back here and show you what else you can do with some of these equations. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to put this into what we call a matrix. The matrix is just taking the coefficients and then also the constant. This is an augmented matrix because I'm dealing with these equal signs here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this right here, coefficients and then the constant. Augmented matrix, I learned it with this little dashy line here. That represents the equal sign, so I'm consistent on my x, y, and my constant term. The, this book does not use those dashy lines, so you just got to know that the, it is an augmented matrix. And we have dimensions here. The dimensions would be a 2 by 3. This is the number of rows. So rows go across, so 1 and 2. And then this one is going to be my columns. And that's going to be going down. So that's going to be the dimension of this particular matrix. And we also call it generally a M by N. Okay, we'll talk about that more a little bit later. Okay, what if we want to solve now system of three equations and three unknowns. Let's get into that and use a matrix to do that. So here we go. We got this system of equations here. 
and we got three equations, three unknowns, and instead of going x, y, z, we went x1, x2, x3. Why that is is because we might go to x4, we might go to x5. We want to expand this out uh, to many dimensions, and so we just use the subscripts instead of using different uh, letter variables. So let's first of all put it into an augmented matrix. So my dimensions of this matrix is a 3 by 4. Three rows and then four columns going down. So now similar to what we did with two equations, two unknowns, we can go ahead and do some of these elementary row operations. We can replace one row by the sum of itself in a multiple of another row. That's what we did up above a little bit. We can interchange two rows. That doesn't change how we solve this thing. And then scaling, we can multiply all entries in a row by a non-zero constant. That's what we did with two equations, two unknowns. We multiplied by a value all the way across. And then two matrices are called row equivalent if there is a sequence of elementary row operations that transforms one matrix into the other. Okay, so we can change and call them equivalent, and we'll show you that here in a second. And I want to kind of show you equivalency to what we did before by using this set of equations too. So for instance, if we want to solve this, look at this term right here, the x1, and then the negative 4x1. Well, can't I eliminate this one by multiplying this whole equation by 4 and then adding? So let's see what happens. So if I add these two together, I'm going to get negative 3x2 plus 13x3 is equal to negative 9. So I just eliminated x1 from the third equation. So that means that I'm going to keep this equation, keep this equation, and now rewrite this equation with this one right here. And the other thing I can do is I can take this one right here and divide it by 2, that whole equation, because then it's just a little bit easier to work with. And so now I'm going to write this into the augmented matrix, which is equivalent to our original. So now this matrix in purple is equivalent to this one in red. And all I did was a few manipulations that were okay because we're just solving equations like we did before, but in a little bit added dimension. So now what I want to do is I want to take this second equation that I do have here, right here in this row, and I want to multiply this row by 3. Why would I want to do that? Well, if you look right here, I can eliminate this 3 by doing that. So I'm going to multiply row 2 by 3 and then add it to row 3, and that would leave just x3 to be solvable. So when I multiply the second equation by 3, I get that, so I can add these two together. These will cancel off, and I'm going to end up with x3 is equal to 3. Ha, 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 we solve for one of the variables. Woo now we can go back and back substitute and maybe figure out what the other ones are. But before I do that, I want to write the matrix that's associated with this. This is my new augmented matrix right here that is equivalent to the first one, equivalent to the second one. And now I did eliminate and get all these zeros here, which really helps me. Because now I can go and back substitute this x3 equal to 3 into this equation and solve for x2. And then I can take x2 and x3 and plug it into this equation and solve for x1. So for x2 here, I'm going to go ahead to this second equation and plug in the 3 that I got for the x3. So I got x2 minus 4, x3, but x3 now is 3, is equal to my 4. So that's where I get that equation there. Solve that quickly and I get x2 is equal to 16. Then I go over here, I can take this first equation here and plug in the 16 and the 3, and I can go ahead and solve for x1. So x1 here is equal to, that's negative 32 plus 3, which would be negative 29, bring it over. So x1 is equal to 29. All right, so then I just solve my system of equations. And what happened? I got one solution, so it's consistent with one solution. So I have even further augmented matrix, which would look like this. And so then if I have the main diagonal of my coefficient matrix to be 1s, and then my, you know, this is my values that I'm going to end up with here. 
So this is ultimately what we want to look at. But if we got it down to where I have zeros here, in those three spots below, then I can just work my way up the ladder by back substituting to figure out what the other values are. So that's how you can go ahead and solve these things. So let's try number two with an augmented matrix. And one other thing I should point out is that these three numbers, 29, 16, and 3, go back and substitute them into my original up here, and you should be get, getting equivalent statements for each one of those three equations. If, it, if you don't, you made a mistake someplace. Okay, so let's try number two. Put this into... Okay, number two here, I made a mistake and put the same exact problem, so I change your notes, so this should be the set of equations that you do know. So let's try this with the augmented matrix now. So here's my equivalent augmented matrix that I do have, and I want to look at these three values right here. If I can get those to be zero, then I can go ahead and solve for this one right here and put that together to help me solve this system of equations. So let's see how this is done. So first of all, I love having this one in the upper left hand corner because I can multiply this whole equation by the value that will wipe out this one to go across and then also the value to cross uh, get rid of this one. So I can get two zeros right here right away if I have a one right there. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative three and add it to the second. So I keep the first one and then I multiply the first one by negative three and add. So I'm going to end up with a zero. Negative three times my negative three here is going to give me nine minus 7, which would give me a 2. So that goes right there. And then if I go negative 3 times this one here, would be negative 12 plus my 7 right here would be a negative 5. And then negative 3 times this one would be 12. And add 12 to that one would give me a 4. Okay, try to do this third row by multiplying this top row by 4 and adding it to this row and then leave the remainder right here. And this is what I ended up with in the third row. Hopefully you did too. Now we're going to go ahead and target this one right here and try to eliminate this one. Well I can use this 2 right here to eliminate it. So I'm going to multiply this second row by a 6. No, not a 6. What are we going to multiply by 3? In order to get a 6 to wipe that last one out, then I can go ahead and solve for this x3 here. Now what's happening? 3 times negative 5. If I add that to my 15, I'm going to get 0. Uh oh I didn't get a 1, or I didn't get a 14, whatever it might be. So we'll have to figure out what that means. And then I finish this one. This one be 3 times 4 is my 12, and I'm going to get a 3 when I end up with this. So if I solve for my x3, this essentially tells me that 0 is equal to 3. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, that tells us that this system is inconsistent. I'm not going to have a solution for this one. Okay, so that's that statement that we end up with that will give us an inconsistent solution. The method is the same. If I if I end up here at this end and I said 4 and a 3 instead of a 0 and a 3, this tells me that 4x3 is equal to 3. Then I can just use simple algebra to solve that. x3 is equal to 3 fourths, and then go ahead and put it up into this equation, put it up into uh, x2 and x3 into the first equation. You can solve for x1, and then you got it. Okay, so this is just an example of an inconsistent system that we do have. If we get 0 equal to 0, that would be another one. 0 equal to 0 or 3 equal to 3, that would tell me that I have an infinite number of solutions, and you would just have to probably check that out. Okay, so that's where we're ending up with these things. Okay, so we have all these definitions that we want to go through. Linear equation. In the variables x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, is an equation that can be written in this form right here. And then what we want to do with that is go ahead and be able to put it in a matrix. And so usually, not always, if I have n variables, then I'm going to have n equations in order to solve this out. So then we have a system of linear equations, or a linear system is a collection of one or more 
linear equations involving the same variables. Solution is what we end up getting out of this, and we can solve x1 for s1 and, all, and so on, xn is equal to s. And so we're just getting the values for each one of those if it does have a solution. And the set of all possible solutions is called the solution set of the linear equation. And then two linear equation systems are called equivalent if they have the same solution set. And that's what's happening when, when we change these rows and manipulate these rows, they're equivalent. Then this last one here is the size of the matrix tells us how many rows and columns it has. If M and N are positive integers, an M by N matrix is a rectangular array of numbers of M rows and N columns. The number of rows always comes first. I have one more example here. I'm just going to work this one out. I would pause this. You work this one out and look at my solution and see if you find it to be the same as mine. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Assignment's down at the bottom. Check this last one out before you go, and have a great day. So here's what I broke it down to. I had these equations. I was using halves, but I can just multiply by 2 to get back to this. So I have all integer values for coefficients. And then I end up with 0 is equal to 5 halves, which once again means no solution and inconsistent. You might not have done it exactly like me, but you should end up with something at the end that does say a false statement. All right, take care.